Então. Welcome everybody to our next seminar. Uh, before beginning, please uh, put your mobile phones on silent so you will have full attention and avoid interruptions in this session. Uh, the session is also being recorded and the presentation will be in English. Finally, our staff will pass uh, a QR code that you also have in your tag so you can uh, scan the QR code with your phone and give your feedback and recommendations uh, about the seminar. So now we are ready to start. This uh, session is under the track of retention. The title of the presentation is Enhancing Hispanic Student Retention Through Innovative Technology Integration in Online Learning. Our speaker is Ruth Rodriguez from Freelance. Thank you very much. Um, I'm freelance, which means that right now I am without a job. So that's why retention is so important for me, as it should be for all universities. Okay, my presentation, Enhancing Hispanic Student Retention Through Innovative Technology Integration in Online Learning. Why online learning? Because that is the future of all education. Most people start with uh, going to university, but then economics are so hard. Hardship is like one of the, of the main things here in Puerto Rico. There are no jobs, and if you do have a job, well, you have to hold, to, hold on to it. So, but I have a goal, and I want to study. So they go online, they study at night, or they study at home. Now, how can we retain these students and not lose them so that they, they will achieve their goals? Okay? And that's what I thought would be a nice plan for Puerto Rico especially because we have a retention rate of 70% more or less. I will give you a graph later and explain it in detail, and it's, it worries me a lot. And what can we do to help retain students in Puerto Rico? Okay, now retention in higher education refers to the ability of an institution to retain and support students throughout their academic journey, making sure they persist successfully complete their courses or programs. In Puerto Rico, as in many other regions, retention is of vital importance for several reasons. First, it contributes to the overall success and reputation of higher education institutions by reflecting positively on their ability to nurture a strong learning environment. Second, high retention rates are an indicative of effective support structures, solid academic programs, and proper student engagement strategies. In, uh, in the context of Puerto Rico, where the education system faces unique challenges, including socioeconomic factors and significant natural disasters, prioritizing retention becomes crucial. Effective retention efforts not only contribute to individual student success, but also play a vital role in strengthening educational effectiveness, thus empowering the workforce, ultimately, contributing to the socioeconomic development of our country. If you, if you send well-prepared people after graduation to the workforce, you will have a successful country. Now, how we, we start, people start with the goal, I'm going to study, I'm going to become something, I, I, I'm going to come, uh, become somebody. And sometimes, because of the institution, okay, I'm focusing on those students who um, 
are like deceived of institutions. Why? Maybe because the institution isn't giving them in the curriculum what they really need. Okay? Sometimes it's just that it's obsolete. Everything. There's, there's nothing really challenging in what they have. So, okay, I'll go to another institution. So that's one thing that the, uh, institutions have to consider for retaining students. Now, um, sorry. This proposal was designed to introduce a viable best practice model through comprehensive strategies encompassing technology-centric support systems using technological tools and personalized platforms, advanced analytics for early identification of at-risk students, and the implementation of lecture capture technology for varied learning options. It emphasizes improved student engagement through varied learning methods, personalized support, and data-driven decision-making. The expected outcomes of this proposal centers on improving Hispanic student retention by offering tailored support and diverse learning methods, thereby enhancing institutional effectiveness and attracting students seeking supportive environments. The project's focus on technology, personalized support, and that data-driven decisions is anticipated to significantly impact Hispanic student retention, institutional effectiveness, student success, diversity, and equal ed educational quality, serving as a model for institutions supporting diverse student populations. Today, more students are not only considering online learning, but also becoming hybrid students, and depending on their circumstances, full-time online learners. It then becomes increasingly apparent that our efforts to enhance student retention are not just about retaining our students, they are about encouraging a successful educational system that adapts to the evolving needs, trends, times, and circumstances, and of course, understanding generation prominence of our students. I've had groups of students ranging from 17 to 65 in one classroom. The most important thing about this is that the 17-year-old one is the one that thinks about cropping out. Then the older people that come to study, well, they have like stronger persistence. So they stay and they finish their courses. So we have to look at the younger population to succeed in retaining students in our universities. Imagine this, a skilled gamer student logs into an online course, eager to learn, but soon finds himself discouraged in an archaic world of outdated digital programs and in, a, in the same class, a 55-year-old unemployed construction worker struggling to stay afloat in his new digital environment. This scenario is not uncommon, and it highlights the pressing need for us to rethink, innovate, and strategize on how we can not only retain students, but also empower them to succeed in the dynamic world of online education. Technology is a vital part of education. Universities know this, and they are making it the best asset they have for they must retain college students to make them competent professionals for the future and secure their own reputation. This presentation is not just about retention rates and the problem it represents for our universities. It's about solutions. Solutions that involve cutting edge technologies, personalized approaches, and a commitment to create an online learning experience that not only retains students,
but motivates them towards success. Okay, this table summarizes the average retention rates in Puerto Rico by college type and level as of 2022. Now, uh, the study worked on 145 college institutions in Puerto Rico. And you're going to say, we don't have 145 institutions in Puerto Rico. We have five or six institutions with 10 campuses. So they studied each of the campuses, each one, starting with public schools, private not-for-profit, and for-profit universities. Now, a uh, total here of 71.60% of students, that would be 28.5% of them dropped the courses. That number <coughs> is pretty high. What's the rate in the states? 82%. So why can't we retain as many students as the state retains? So looking at the graph, but for example, here I have that four-year colleges have a 71.14% retained, and that means that they lose 29% of their students. Community colleges loses 42% of their students. Trade schools, has the lowest and I mean the highest retention rate and private and for private for profit has lose 47 percent of their students. Now you're going to ask um, okay public schools Universidad de Puerto Rico you have private not for profit we have Ana Jimenez we have Universidad Interamericana. Then we have uh, private for-profit. The largest here in Puerto Rico is Nuke University, Nuke University. Okay? And then you look down and it says community colleges. Do we have community colleges in Puerto Rico? Yes, we do. ICPR. And look at the numbers in ICPR. They lose, um, they lose, 42% of their students every year. And look at the end of the column, private per profit. Look at these numbers. They lose 47% of their students every year. That's almost half. Okay? So what's going on? Why do they have those low, those such high dropout rates? Is it facilities? Is it their um, curriculums? We have to find out. And usually, most of the time, I believe me, I've worked in each and every one of these institutions. Those colleges that have the highest dropout rates is because of their facilities and because most of the things they own are obsolete. Okay? They don't invest in the institution and they're not thinking of investing for their students. Okay? So, my objectives, I will define retention and its importance in higher education in Puerto Rico, improve overall student retention rates by uh, giving ideas, um, reduce dropout rates, and enhance the learning experience. Identify those innovative technologies that can help to enhance student retention. Identify key challenges, infrastructure, support services, up-to-date technology, personalized learning paths, gaps, and other features that some institutions might have or otherwise lack that enables them to compete with online courses from other institutions. Factors con contributing to student retention in online learning. A study conducted in 2019 in Norfolk, Virginia, proved that the most significant factors 
that contribute to student retention in e-learning are, first, institution support that includes outstanding services, superior technical facilities and support, solid orientation and excellent student support services. Curriculum or program levels of difficulty where students tend to drop out when the curriculum or program courses or the material taught were found to be or too easy or too difficult. Sense of belonging. We have to give our students a sense of belonging. The instructor, instructor presence. Um, sometimes the courses are just recorded. You don't see the professor. The professor really, really doesn't interact with students. So what happens? You lose the student. Okay. Then the course design and organization. I find that most courses are unnecessary in some universities. My personal experience, I dropped out from a college in Puerto Rico. I was studying psychology then, and I finished psychology in another institution. Why? I dropped out from that university particularly because I was in psychology. Why do I have to take pre-calculus and calculus? It doesn't make sense. So I said, I'm sorry, I'm not going to take those courses. I don't need it. I need statistics. So I looked at the curriculums in other universities, and it changed. You lose students that way. And you have to prepare your students for the workforce. Give them what they need, all those abilities, all those tools they need to succeed in the job they want to work for. For example, personally, I work with criminal justice and forensic sciences. And um, I studied the curriculum for police in Puerto Rico, and most of those curriculums don't give the students what they really need. For example, what's the most important thing on for crime in, in a crime? Evidence, right? You don't have any evidence, you don't have no crime. You don't have you can't put a criminal behind bars. So most of them lack the study of evidence. And that's sad, because that's the most important thing in criminology and in criminal justice. So that's why colleges must reevaluate their curriculum so as to meet the necessities of every one of the students. And hi. Student persistence. I don't like that course. I'm leaving. No commitment, no persistence, maybe. And if we go back, they don't have a sense of belonging with that institution. Because they lack that certain something you might need to succeed. In a, how can innovative technology improve overall student retention rates, reduce dropout rates, and enhance the learning experience for online students? In a nutshell, innovative technology can significantly improve overall student retention rates, reduce dropout rates, and enhance the learning experience for online students. Here are several ways in which technology can play a transformational role. Personalized learning paths. By assessing students' strengths and weaknesses, these systems deliver tailored content and assessments, ensuring a better fit for each learner's pace and style. Most curriculums in universities are designed for everybody, as is, if every student were equals. You have to think, I learn one way, maybe you learn another way. I'm visual. I'm very visual. visual. There are other stu students that need to practice what they have learned so they can learn it. 
So we have to think about that also. How do students learn? How can I reach that student that's not learning as well as other students are learning, right? So then we have data analysis analytics for early intervention. These tools can analyze student data to identify early signs of struggling or disengaged students so that the institution can then intervene promptly with targeted support, personalized feedback, or additional resources to address specific challenges and prevent dropouts. Numbers. Give me numbers. What student is failing? Why is he failing? Now, don't put the load on the, t on the professor. <coughs> Sorry. Don't put the load on the professor. The institution has to play its part too. Why isn't that student learning at the same rate as all the rest? Why does he want to drop out? How can we help him? Most institutions, you want to drop out? Okay, bye. See you. Okay? So we have to take that, um, those numbers and see what we can do to help reduce dropout rates. For telling analytics for student success, they can forecast students at risk of dropping out based on various factors like, for example, attendance, participation, and academic performance. Uh, some of you have worked with Canvas. I used to love Canvas because it has uh, like a dropout detective on the bottom of the page, and you open it up and you see how many students have seen the course, your, your, your course, how many students have participated, uh, who hasn't done anything, how many assignments have they, have they done, et cetera, et cetera. Why can't all the universities have a system like that so not only the professor can see what's going on with its course, but also the institution can then say, okay, let's take this student, let's do something about it, okay? Uh, online mentoring programs. Implementing online mentoring programs using video conferencing and communication tools connect students with mentors who can provide guidance, support, and advice. It's not that I'm talking about 24-7 kind of mentoring. That's impossible. But then, why can't I have a mentor that speaks to me from eight to five? Or why can't I go and say, for example, uh, I have a problem, and then they go and say, well, we'll take a, take a number and I'll call you later on, and what time can I call you? That doesn't work. The student calls for counseling or guidance. Come on, take that student and give him mentoring that same instant. Don't let it go, because he'll go. Okay? Accessing concept and universal design by using technology that support accessibility and universal design principles ensures that online content is inclusive and can be accessed by students with diverse needs. This approach prom promotes an unbiased learning environment and improves retention rates. Not everybody has the same technical abilities. Not everybody is cyber genius. Okay, we're talking about that worker, construction worker, 55 years old, who went back to school. He may have many, none, zero, nada. No technical abilities. We have to help that student. Give him special tutoring. Tell him, hey, listen, you're online, come over to campus and I'll help you here so you can do it. That kind of thing, okay? By in integrating innovative technologies onto online education, institutions can create a dynamic and supportive learning environment 
that can that not only enhances learning experience but also significantly contributes to higher student retention rates and reduced dropout rates. Continuous assessment, adaptation, and updating of these technologies based on student feedback and performance analytics further refine their impact on student success. Specific technologies that can be integrated into online learning platforms at college level. Okay, uh, having worked in various institutions, I find that most of these can be used in their platforms. So we have to look for platforms that professors can use what? Ever of these, um, I call them like helpers, okay? If they can help me deliver a better class, I can, I can use it. But most platforms don't let you do that. They, they don't help you. And worse, if you work in an institution where you have to use their PowerPoints, their platforms, their obsolete form of um, recording, et cetera, et cetera, that makes things worse, okay? So here, several specific technologies can be integrated into online learning platforms to enhance the overall learning experience and improve student engagement. Here are some examples. Interactive video platforms like Kaltura, BitGrid, or PlayPosit allow instructors to create interactive videos with embedded quizzes, discussions, and annotations. Virtual reality, augmented reality, tools like Class VR and ThinkLink create immersive educational experiences, particularly beneficial for subjects that require visualization and simulations, gamification. What? The younger generation loves to play games. So let's make each class a game where he can learn. Give him what he wants. Give him what he likes. He'll learn. Okay? Now we have the older student who doesn't like games. So give him more aggressive material so that he can learn too. But using different platforms that can help you. Then there's adaptive <coughs> learning platforms, McGaw-Hills, Alex, Smart Sparrow, oh please, try Smart Sparrow, you will love it. Uh, there's a Pearson My Lab, provide adaptive learning experiences by adjusting content based on individual student progress and performance. Gamification platforms like Kahoot, quizzes, or Classcraft that incorporate gamification elements into the learning process, making education more engaging and motivating for student for college students. Virtual internship platforms, platforms such as Farage and Ribbon that offer virtual internship experiences, allowing college students to gain practical skills and industry exposure online. I couldn't enter into the, them. Most of them have to pay. Universities can pay. Well, just for fun, I can't do it. Because it's like on a monthly basis and you make this contract for a year or two. But um, most of them are wonderful for practice. And you can even have like uh, internships virtual internships on things you want to study, okay? And there's one thing I love, Metaverse. I, fig I saw myself, the first time I saw the Metaverse world, I saw myself giving a class in constitutional law and taking my students in a virtual bus, in a one minute ride, to Congress to see the actual Bill of Rights. They could see it there and see the forefathers that signed it. And that's coming. 
It's coming sooner than you guys think. Metaverse is almost here, and it'll help us professors a lot. So um, it's one thing you have to study for it. You have to prepare yourselves for it. But uh, virtual, in, vir virtual internship platforms are the best for any course. Because practice is perfection. And most students need to practice what they are taught so they can, what? Make it a part of themselves. The integration of these and many other technologies into online learning platforms at college level can create a dynamic and engaging educational environment supporting a variety of subjects and help supply support to the diverse needs of college students, thus assuring retention. The, selects, the selection of specific technologies should align with the college's educational goals, the curriculum, and the preferences of the institution instructors and students. New technological trends in e-learning. It is known that many of today's forms of teaching will be obsolete or highly transformed in the future, which is happening now, especially for those using technology as teaching resources. That is why it is essential to prepare our institutions for this new environment. What then are some of the newest trends in online learning? Entertainment. Entertainment such as, the, as through games, films, or shows that is designed to educate or teach something such as ed, edabis. Design thinking is a nonlinear intuit, intuitive process that is used to understand users, challenge assumptions, redefine problems and create innovative solutions to resolve problems or situations as is HCD Connect. It's wonderful. Uh, it, develops, it helps develop critical thinking in the students. Microlearning. Microlearning is a way of teaching and training by means of small chunks of time like the ones used by the talent card platform. User-friendly interfaces. A user-friendly interface in online learning at the college level contributes to a positive and efficient learning experience. It fosters accessibility, engagement, and satisfaction among students. In the end, supporting their academic success. Uh, it's very frustrating every time I started a new online course and I would receive an email saying, I can't access the course. And I know they try. They really do try. But then they fail. And that is very frustrating. We have user-friendly interfaces like everyone can access whatever they need whenever they need it. And students are satisfied, not frustrated, because I can't access the, pardon the word, the damn presentation or whatever it is they want to access, or the exams. That makes them anxious. And it makes them like send you 10, 12 emails, which you have to answer quickly, a day, OK? Regular feedback from users and continuous usability testing are essential to refine and enhance their user interface based on evolving needs and technological advancements. A user-friendly interface ensures that the online learning platform is accessible to all students, including those with diverse abilities and needs. This inclusivity promotes equal opportunities for all learners. Thus, an approachable design ensures that the online learning platform is accessible across various devices and screen sizes. This flexibility allows ease for students who access the platform from desktops, laptops, tablets, or smartphones. 
with many students accessing online platforms on mobile devices, a mobile-friendly de design ensures a consistent and positive experience supporting learning on the go. I have seen students answer a multiple choice exam on the phone, and I have seen them write whole three-page essays on the same phone. And they, they're okay with that. They love it. I can't do it. I need to see this. Okay? But most students will love that. And if I have a user-friendly interface, I can do it. Because that's just what I want to do. What are some comprehensive strategies that can be used to retain student, college students in online courses? Retaining college students in online courses is crucial for their academic success and overall satisfaction and for the institutions to maintain their status quo. There are some comprehensive strategies to enhance student retention in online courses, like engaging in course design, interactive learning activities, regular communication, support services, flexible scheduling, personalized learning, instructor presence, continuous improvement, tech literacy, support, incentives, and recognition. By implementing these strategies, you can create a positive and engaging online learning environment that promotes student retention and success. Conclusion. In conclusion, addressing the challenges of students' retention in online learning through innovative technology integration is a strategic and valuable initiative. With current statistics indicating concerning retention rates, it is imperative to recognize the crucial role of technology in overcoming these obstacles. The proposal outlines clear objectives, including the improvement of overall retention rates, reduction of dropout rates, and enhancement of the learning experience. The integration of personalized learning paths, gamification elements, virtual and augmented reality, real-time feedback mechanisms, and adaptive learning platforms represents a comprehensive solution for students' retention and is ever-evolving educational environment. Institutions must keep up with these changes. The use of data analytics, user-friendly interface, interactive content, and virtual support services further enrich the online learning experience. Professional development for faculty ensures effective use of these technologies, while a commitment to continuous assessment and improvement guarantees the sustainability of this initiative. Keeping up with technical changes and emphasizing the measurable positive impact on student retention through this innovative approach is crucial. In essence, the proposed initiative promises to keep revolutionized to help revolutionize online education, creating an engaging, adaptive, and supporting learning environment conductive to student success. Let's be productive. Any questions? I know it's not easy. And uh, the key word here is Institutions have to invest. If they want to retain students, they have to invest. That's the, like the bottom line of the whole argument. Yeah, so thank you for your presentation. And I would say if anybody has a question, they can raise their hands, uh, say their name and institution. But go ahead. Uh, yeah, congratulations for, for the presentation. I'm Alberto Acreda of Territory. Thank you. So, so uh, you keep talking about a, propo a, a proposal. Is this uh, something you have put um, together or, or just... Yes, it could be done. In fact, uh, had asked for proposals, okay. so I submitted mine on retention, and they, they liked the idea. It's, it's, it's feasible. It can be done. But institutions have to invest and change their mentality. That's the first thing. If you want to retain students, you have to think like the students, what they need, 
what they really, really need to succeed as students. But, but I think you, you actually hit the nail there. The main problem is, as you say, is the investment. Uh, so if you think of the breakdown of the universities that you put in there and colleges, right? Of course, those that depend on public money are struggling a little bit more, obviously. I know, I know. The ones that are private probably have a, a better chance of having a fund, but you never know about that. My question to you is, if the challenge is a monetary challenge, first, how do you resolve that? And then the second piece of that is many institutions, whether they're private or public, they already have an infrastructure of technologies that may or may not be obsolete. But sometimes the interoperability of some of these solutions don't match. So how do you help right. how do you help the leaders of these universities to really say, okay, what's the what's the solution to really create an interoperability for technology? That's part of what we're trying to do in my company, but I'm just saying that I'd like to see what your take is. Well, um, usually um, in the institutions that I see that have succeeded in this and have the greatest rate of retention, they invested in good technicians, people that can really make it work. For example, um, I come from Ponce, and I used to work in this place called Popac, Ponce Paramedical College. With the, which died, it was a, a college here in Puerto Rico that died with Maria. Maria took the whole place and just took it away. And uh, it wasn't a big institution, but we had the best technician in the world. And he made everything work. And the thing is that he made suggestions and the administration thought, hey, he has this proposal, and I think it will could work. How much would it cost? Let's invest. And they did. And they had, and students were happy. After he started working with Popak, everything like worked on wheels. But you have to have a good technician, you have to have good equipment, you have to have people that really know what they're doing. Okay? For example, I used to I was I worked in this other institution where they said that, oh you have to add this and you have to do that, gamification. Uh, they gave me the whole picture. And I did it. Because I love that. Interface. None of the programs mixed with the others. So my course became a failure, and I said, okay, I, this, does, this isn't working. I'm working overtime for nothing, so I went back to the old same thing. There's nothing else I can do. And I couldn't fight the system either. I fought, I really did, because they heard me, but they didn't do anything. And that's how you change students, because they start fighting with you, you're the professor. I can't get into the platform. I can't send you emails. I can't this. I can't that. And then they say, I'm going to drop out. Because that's the way it works. And uh, the institutions that worry me the most are the nonprofit ones, which are supposed to be investing more money because they're earning more money, as you can see with the numbers. And it made a pat an impact on me because I said, maybe the University of Puerto Rico is one with the less retention because it doesn't have any money. You saw the numbers. It had nothing to do with real money. It has to do with what the institution is doing for the students. And um, I think a little investment here and there helps. I studied in the University of Puerto Rico. I never had a problem with any of its programs, never. And I used Westlaw, I used Andy, I used everything. I worked in places where I couldn't access Westlaw, I couldn't access Andy because I had to pay for it myself. Like, you know, so that means that if I can't do it, students can't do it either. Any other question? Yes, 
when they have a whole bunch of so the institution can adopt at least one for each of the uh, each of the programs each of the things that need to be done so that I can have it and I can use it that's my proposal just invest it would be great if they could but I know in real life you have know, 30,000 students and the, the university cannot afford to have like a, a subscription you know, especially the academic reading student uh, faculty want to use what they want to use as far as a publisher or a specific thing. So to, you know, we might invest in one, we can't invest in 20. No, I know. And I that's, know. that's where the students I end know. up bearing the cost. So that's why I made this. it simple. Like for example, I used only five ways you can use to enhance. Mm -hmm. Five. Now if you can have one of each, that's not that much. Just, you know, so the professor can have tools for their students, especially if you don't use any, if you don't buy any, just one. The one where they can practice as they learn. With that, I bet they'd be happy. In criminal justice, I start courses, I usually started with the minor courses, and um, wow. They want crime. They want crime scenes. That's what they want. That's why they're there. They didn't see that. They saw that like in the third or fourth semester. They don't want that. That's why they want crime from the beginning. Give them crime. Give them what they want from the beginning. And you'll retain that student. Not just, you know, more and more and more and more material to learn and I'm learning, but I forgot all about that later on. You know, you have to, you have to uh, give the students things that they can remember that uh, appeal to them. And if it's only one program that can help the professor do that, like for example in nursing they have these simulators why can't we have crime sim simulators? <laughs> yeah. I usually had to do drawings, because I can draw a bit and I'm not bad at it. I used to do drawings on the board and ask them, hey, what happened here? And bring pictures, like, uh, for example, I would put a crime scene on the monitor and uh, what do you think happened here? Just from the beginning of the course so they could be interested like we're using something that I like. This is what I'm here for. But most colleges don't think about that. And sometimes I see the curriculum and this is obsolete. This is, isn't going to help them in the future. Because courses that they don't really need. I've dropped out two colleges just because they're not giving me what I need. So, about to retention, they didn't retain me. So, it's a problem here in Puerto Rico. It's worse than what you think. The rate in the States is 82%. And it's not Hispanics. It's not Hispanics that are dropping out. Because I, I saw the numbers in the States and that's not so bad. But down here in Puerto Rico, it's very, very um, critical to think and look for solutions, real solutions. And because the professors have no work either, so that doesn't help much. We have to conclude the uh, uh, questions, but thank you for everybody who asked the questions. Remember that you go to your tech and scan uh, first day, so you can uh, state your opinions about the seminar and also if, to see the other seminars that will be today you can scan the conference program and if you're in continue learning at the end of the conference program you will find the link so you can ask the, for the certificate and also make the payment so thank you very much and enjoy the other seminars